Welcome to Home Ties, a podcast about staying connected to home, no matter where you are. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily those of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. After seven years of marriage, celebrity couple Kim Kardashian and Kanye West announced that they are getting a divorce. Whenever some public figure falls into disgrace, whether it's a celebrity from film or a sports star or a politician, The media coverage is relentless. People like to hear about others' failures. Of course, there are so many negative consequences to bad press. A person's reputation is dragged through the mud. Then there's the effect on the family members. And, of course, an organization, if that person is associated with. That's why whenever there are accusations made of wrongdoing, there's a tendency to deny, deny, deny. Or to distract people from the issue by creating other problems. Or just plain covering up the truth. And, of course, this isn't only a phenomenon that we see affecting people in secular professions. Recently, word came out that Christian apologist Ravi Zacharias, a man who had done so much to advance the cause of Christianity during his his lifetime, the news came out that Ravi Zacharias had committed many sexual indiscretions during his lifetime. Whenever a church leader disgraces himself publicly, it gives the church's enemies an opportunity to sharpen their knives and to plunge them into not only the person, but also to the institution itself. Another case in point, the scandal involving priests in the Roman Catholic Church and the sexual abuse of minors. It's not a good thing that the church covered up their priests' sins by shuffling them off to another parish in many cases. But I can understand why they did it. You might call it damage control, call it uh, fear of facing the music, but what is the net result? Look at the effects that those priests' actions had on the children that they abused, and the effect that their actions have had on the reputation of the church. Certainly many, many Catholics have left the church because of their actions of the hierarchy to cover up the sins of those priests. And not only have they left the the Catholic church, who knows how many of those people's faith in God has been shipwrecked as a result. One of my responsibilities here as a part of the mission team is to manage our mission promotions. Uh, It's my responsibility to make sure that people in the United States are well informed about what our organization is doing here in Africa. And, of course, we do this for uh, many different reasons, but I think the primary reason is to elicit the support of people in the United States 
to continue to pray for us, to continue to donate to our cause, to give us the help that we need to carry out God's work. So, since that is my job, I'm always on the lookout for something that I can turn into a story or maybe just a Facebook post. You know, no matter what story I'm telling, like any good writer, I'm trying to find an angle from which to tell the story. Maybe somebody might call it a spin. Now, of course, I cannot tell every story that I see. There are a lot of things that happen that don't rise to the level of worthiness to share with other people, uh, not only because of the insignificance of the events, but maybe also more because of the nature of those events. I don't write anything about local pastors falling into sin. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not in favor of just sweeping things under the carpet, as happened in the case of the Catholic priests uh, in their abuse of children. It's just that people living on the other side of the world certainly don't know these men who are involved in sin. They don't know the circumstances that led to these men taking those sinful actions. And to be honest, as an outsider in this culture, as someone who barely even knows what's going on under my own roof, I cannot understand the motivations of these people. However, these pastors' sins are known to the members of the churches that they are serving. They are uh, very often known throughout the entire church body, since it is a small church. So, obviously, the situation has to be dealt with, and dealt with in a public way. And so, the variety of means that the church has at its disposal is disciplining pastors, uh, removing them from ministry, even going as far as excommunicating them from the church fellowship. Now, of course, people don't always understand the, that there is a good motivation behind discipline, right? It's not to punish, not to seek revenge, but rather in love to lead people who have fallen into sin to repentance, and sometimes they are so set in their sin that it does take a severe measure such as excommunication to lead them to that point of acknowledging their flaw and their sin. And ultimately, the goal of this is, of course, that once a person has confessed their sin, that they would receive forgiveness, that they would be restored uh, to fellowship in the church, and that they would once again be considered brothers in Christ. Whenever the church disciplines its church workers, it's really no different than what a pastor does with his individual members when they fall into sin, or even what a father does with a straying child. Well, St. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 5, the sins of some are obvious, reaching the place of judgment ahead of them. In the same way, good deeds are obvious, and even those that are not obvious cannot remain hidden forever. Now, it is certainly much easier to expose someone's dirty laundry than it is to hold up someone's shining example of faith-wrought good deeds. It's just the nature of human beings, that we like to delight in evil things and ignore or downplay things which are positive. So, feel-good stories are few and far between. People tend to tune out rather quickly, even 
the media always, the news media always stick those uplifting stories at the end of their broadcast when most people have tuned out. One scandal, however, negates 100 positive sound bites. That's why the Bible is explicit that church leaders must watch themselves very carefully. Now, people do have unrealistic ideas about church workers in general and missionaries in particular. Unfortunately, people put us up on a pedestal and sometimes do not have uh, a proper understanding of our appreciation that we have a sinful nature just like anybody else. The Bible's qualifications for someone who is to serve in the public ministry are extremely high, right? There's lists of things that are expected of pastors in both uh, First and Second Timothy and the book of Titus. One uh, of those qualifications that comes to mind in connection with this topic is the qualification that a pastor is to be blameless or above reproach. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it's not the same as saying that a pastor is to be perfect, because, of course, that's impossible. Pastors do have a corrupt nature like anyone else. Uh, however, being blameless means that you have a good reputation, that there is nothing that people can uh, accuse you of having as a public character flaw. Now, there are Lots of ways that you, of course, can lose that quality of being blameless. Lots of ways that you can wreck your good reputation. Uh, Some of the more obvious ones are public drunkenness, um, adultery, or stealing money from the church. But there are a whole host of other ways in which a person, a pastor, can lose his good reputation and his standing in the eyes of his congregation, uh, such as if a pastor consistently displays impatience with others, uh, if he is uh, an individual with a hot temper, or if he has difficulty working alongside others and has a very uncooperative spirit. A reality is, is that pastors work in the people business. And people, well, they are some of the most frustrating uh, objects that you could ever work with. They are sinners. Uh, Pastors themselves are sinners, so they don't always respond in good ways to the frustrating situations that they are confronted with. However, the stakes couldn't be higher because the faith not only of the pastor, but of so many others in that congregation and in the broader church, their faith is at stake. Now, only Christ resisted all the temptations of the devil. Only Christ was perfectly patient with his followers. Only Christ controlled his tongue perfectly And so we recognize that only Christ can claim that uh, title of being perfectly blameless. But the thing is, he gives me, as a called worker, the benefit of what he's done. Christ's perfect record covers up my past, present, and future failures. When God looks at me, he sees Jesus. I know that I don't belong in God's house, but Jesus promised to give me a room in his father's mansion. And there is no one, no one who can tell me that I have been disqualified, that I don't belong there. Now, as for telling positive stories 
um, it's pretty clear that we still need to get them out there. We need to tell these positive, uplifting stories of people, not necessarily to hold them up as an example for us to follow, but rather as evidence of God's grace at work in the lives of these people. We need to get these positive stories out there to counteract all of the negative narratives. We need also to keep sharing the story of Christ's mercy towards us sinners. We need to keep telling about the hope that he gives us even while we are stuck in the muck. Christ's deeds are well documented in Scripture. His glory will become evident to everyone at his second coming. But when he comes, it won't be just for him to brag and show off all the good things that he has done. Jesus will show the entire world who are his faithful ones. And Jesus will state publicly the reward that they will receive for everything they have done in his service. Nothing can beat that kind of media coverage. I am painfully aware of my limitations. Here, as I work in Malawi, I have limitations, obviously, as a sinful human being. And I also have limitations as a foreigner living in this culture. And that's why I ask God to help me remain focused on telling good stories, to remain focused on being positive and not to dwell on the negative things that I see. Certainly there is no need for me or anyone to wallow in self-pity about the problems that we are facing here in our mission field or anywhere else in the world. But rather, because Christ has covered up our shame and has made us pure in God's sight, every Christian has motivation to model Christian love and humility. We all have Christ's support and command to lead our brothers and sisters to repentance so that they too may be filled with Christ's mercy. And on the day when finally God brings our deeds to light, his son's perfect deeds will cover all of our misdeeds. And God will accept whatever we tried to do for his kingdom. Now, next time on Home Ties, I use words to earn my living, uh, whether it's as a public speaker or writer or even a podcaster. But as my Bulgarian friends say, Izik moi vrak moi, which means my tongue, my enemy. We'll see you next time.